<laughs> Blake, I, I'm sure you guys wanted wanted to get at least one win there, but uh, we're watching the maturation of Colby Jones, and it's seems really fun to watch for everybody. Yeah, Kobe, how much? Nice. Kobe nice. Kobe uh, nice. And he listens, too. He listens, um, asks questions about anything. He confused on, so I think that's why he's um, getting grasping things real quick. You kept finding him on the cross-court passes for the wide opens, or just how much faith do you have in him already? Oh, yeah, man, a lot. Um, if I don't feed him that faith, um, who he's going to get it from? Because um, Mike's going to be hard on him. Um, so I just, I just try to be positive and tell him I'm going to find him. Uh, so he can have this confidence because we're going to need him at some point this year. Um, so it's big that he's showing these um, signs early. So, uh, Malik, in the first half, it looked like you were much more of a, a distributor than a scorer. In the second half, that kind of changed. Did you kind of take it more upon yourself to to want to get involved offensively and score? Yeah, man, I was being a little um, a little laid back too much in the preseason this year. Um, so I had to step it up the last game to um, go into the regular season, um, and that's what I did. Malik, after the, I think the second lob that you threw for McGee, it seemed like he had a big smile on his face after throwing that one down. Just what kind of uh, camaraderie have you built with him really quickly? Because it seems like you guys are always looking for each other with the lobs. Uh, I told him to stop faking the handoffs to me because uh, I'm going to give him the ball back because <laughs> uh, he always try to fake it because he's scared somebody going to steal it. But, no, nah, man, JaVale, um, all you got to do is store it up somewhere. He's going to catch it. Um, you just got to put it over the defender, man. And it's, it's amazing to have somebody like that because it opens up everything else for everybody. So um, we're going to continue to build this relationship. Malik, how good was it, um, you know, for you and, and a couple other guys, Kobe, Sasha, to, to get kind of extended minutes and, and some opportunities to, to do more um, with the starters out just going into the regular season now? I will not worry about myself that much. Um, I wanted Sasha and them, um, a lot of guys that haven't played that much to get a lot of reps, um, a lot of shots, um, and just see how fast the game is. Um, I know I'll be all right. I, I, I'm going to figure it out. Uh, so, yeah, man, it's, it's great to see Sasha make some shots. It's great to see everybody make shots, man. Um, so we just got to pick it up on the defensive end a little bit more, um, lock in this next week to um, play Utah again, man, in Utah. So we'll be ready. What do you talk talk to a guy like uh, Sasha, you know, coming in and, and trying to get him going? Because he's, he's looking for that confidence as well. Oh, yeah, man. I just tell him to keep shooting the ball. We're going to find him. Um, we, we want him to shoot the ball. Um, when he pump fake one dribble pass, um, they kind of put us in a little bad situation then rather than him shooting. So we just try to feed him good energy um, and just try to let him know that the shot is better than the one dribble pass. So um, Sasha's going to be all right. He'll be all right. He's been a pro for a long time, man, so he'll be all right. You spent a lot of time playing with Davion in the second unit. What have you seen from him just with the work that he's put in this offseason with his shot? Because looks, he looks a lot more confident with it. That's all it is. You said it, man. He's just way more confident, um, and I'm trying to feed him that too as well. So, um, yeah, man, just way more confident. Uh, he put a, lot of work, put a lot of work in in the summer for sure, um, and he still does. I see him every night um, in here when I come back too to get some shots up. So, um, it's, work, it's, it's showing. It's showing. Hey, Malik, do you feel like you learned anything about this group throughout the course of the preseason? Not really that I already knew. Um, but Kobe's good. <laughs> Kobe's good for sure. <laughs> and Malik, kind of along those lines, as you look forward to the regular season now, you got a few days. How important will these days be to either fine-tune things for the regular season or really kind of get some rest under you guys before the marathon begins? Both. We got to do both, man. Um, get a little bit of rest. Um, and just really getting tip top shape. So the season, we play fast, man. If you're not in shape, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for you to catch up. So um, yeah, we just gotta get in our tip top shape before we play um, Utah next week. So yeah, we'll be ready. Kessler, you just look so much more confident tonight than any time we've seen. Do you feel that building up uh, just with your play, whether it was as a rebounder or with your three point shot tonight? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I don't know. I guess it just took a, a, some time to warm up with these couple of these preseason games. Um, you know, just being kind of in and out of the lineup. I know I'll probably play some tonight. So, yeah. Uh, Kessler, the, every year we hear, you know, coaches, other players say, you know, we're going to need everybody at some point in the year. How, how good is it for, for some of you guys to get some extra run tonight and kind of get into a rhythm going into the regular season? I think it's, it's great for us, especially uh, the new guys, the rooks. Um, I feel like I've kind of been in that situation uh, the last two years of my career, um, just having to 
um, stay ready and stuff like that. So as um, long as I keep the, the right mindset, I think I, I should be good. But I think it's good for all of us. Kessler, speaking of staying ready, how competitive are our practices with like the first, second, and third units of playing each other? And how much does that feed into you being ready for big minutes like tonight? Oh, I think uh, that's the most important thing for us. Um, I honestly feel like, um, and Fox was saying this earlier, that we play, we've been playing better um, in practice than we have these preseason games, especially the first couple of them. Um, so that's been big for us. I think even if it doesn't show now, that'll, that'll carry over into deep into the season. So, What have you seen from Colby and specifically the fact that he's doing this in his first couple games in the NBA? Man, I just think I think his his poise is like is crazy for a rookie. Um, just the mindset he has, the attitude that he has toward everything is kind of like he's been in the NBA for a minute. Um, even just off the court, his personality is just kind of cool and, and collected like that. So I don't know. That, that's uh, that's impressive to see. I definitely I wasn't like that as a rookie. So that's that's special. Kessler, we really haven't seen you as a rebounder all that much. Just how much is that? got to be part of who you are this season too when you do get your opportunities um that's something that i'm trying to focus on um especially just to help the team out um just to get playing time when i am out there um i feel like that's something that i can control especially with my athleticism so um yeah just try to help the team out the most i can doing that and you have bulked up quite a bit this summer uh, just is that so you can be more of a three four and you can play both positions um yeah, honestly, um, as long as I can still be be fast, but yeah, just being able to guard these stronger dudes, um, yeah. Did I say go see Sac Republic this weekend? Yeah. I did. Okay, go see the playoff game, the playoff opener, Sac Republic this weekend, everybody. All right, Sac Republic, let's go. Mark Briggs, a lot of pressure on you, baby. A lot of pressure on you to get it done. I know you will. Um, I, I tell you what, man, uh, our quote unquote second unit for tonight was, was really good. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, Malik, it was great to see him have the performance that he had, uh, on both ends of the floor. You know, there were some things defensively that, uh, that I've been on him about that, um, he was better at tonight and, you know, obviously when he's good on that end of the floor, offensively, he's about as talented as they come. And, um, you know, he made play after play after play after play down the stretch, and it was a lot of fun to see him kind of kind of break out of his mold a little bit. On top of that, play a long stretch of minutes um, in, in doing so. Uh, Alex was fantastic. I mean, he, you know, he was one for five from the field, but he had seven boards. I thought he was a monster defensively, too, just being big and trying to do it without fouling. I mean, he, he had five blocks and, um, I mean, probably could have gotten a couple more. Took an elbow to the face, too. Uh, he was very, very tough. Set great screens. His screens were fantastic tonight. Um, Keon... He was really good too. I thought he came off and got some deflect. Come off, came off the bench, got some key deflections for us. But just his defensive presence was was really, really good. Uh, Kessler, whoa, he he led us in rebounding. You know, everybody looks at Kessler and says, "Well, he can't do this. He can't do that." He's a competitor. He's long. He's athletic. He's strong. Uh, the kid rebounds. He gives a thousand percent on every single play. And, you know, he's been working very, very hard on his three-point shot. And it was good to see – it was good to see him go two for two from the three-point line because as hard as he – as hard as he works at it, he definitely deserves it. But heck of a game by Kessler on both ends of the floor, especially on the glass uh, with, with, with eight rebounds. Uh, and then, I mean, you know, the young fella, Kobe. Um, I mean, he was – he was really good. I, you know, again, he's, he's, I'm loving how he's making my job. He's making my job harder, you know. Um, I love it. Uh, but every time we've thrown him out there, he just keeps getting better and better and better and better. And his demeanor is the same. Uh, you know, we, we, as you guys know, we like to cut a lot in our offense. 
and he's got to be the hardest cutter on the team. And he doesn't do it most times. He does it every frickin' time. It's a hard cut. And, and I, I just love watching the kid compete um, on both ends of the floor. He's He's been really good for us these last couple of games especially. But that group that I just named, the way they shared the ball down the stretch, it was beautiful. Uh, somebody was open, they passed it. You had a layup, you shot it. You had an open shot, you shot it. And there wasn't a lot of dribble, 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 dribble. And, and you know, and the spacing was great. And just, just a fun game to watch for me down the stretch. Mike, it obviously speaks to your durability where you don't have many games without both Domas and Fox. Um, w because of that, did you come in tonight to tonight with – Kind of like a well, we'll see what happens. Kind of a kind of a vibe to, you know, maybe some question marks to see who would be those people that would step up. Yeah, for for sure. You know, I because you know with the group that we played, a lot of those guys haven't been in that position. Uh, obviously, Malik has, and uh, he's done it before. And you know, whether it's a, a big game or not so big game, and you know, and uh, for so for him. It was just good to see him getting back into his groove a little bit. But you know, one of the questions we had, like I said earlier, we played Kobe at the backup point guard, and we wanted to see how that would unfold. And you know, it, it didn't feel like we missed a beat when he was out there in that position. You know, um, it'd be great to go back and watch the tape and see if my feeling and it is is still the same after watching it. But. Uh, uh, to see him step up, to see a guy like Kessler step up, who hasn't really played much in the preseason, um, <clears throat> you know, to see Alex even step up, and, and, and Keon, that was that was a lot, a little, little surprising because they hadn't gotten an opportunity. But that was a lot of fun to see those guys step up and defend, share the ball, cut hard, and all those all other little things that we do very well. Mike, first off, are you going to the Republic game tomorrow night? Uh, it was it's Saturday. Oh, sorry, Saturday night. It, it's whatever. Saturday, so we we, we're, we have practice and we have a, a fan fest, I think. And I'm okay if no fans come to the fan fest as long as they're out at the Republic game. Uh, I know Vivek probably doesn't like me, Matina. They don't like me saying that, but uh, it's just one one fan fest and big game. Uh, so if I have an opportunity, I I, I will. Uh, I've gone to uh, I don't know three four games this year, and they've been a lot of fun. Uh, so. and, and then with Malik Monk tonight, it, it, I I remember last year him talking about how here in Sacramento he's been allowed to express himself a little bit more with sure. how he plays, especially with his distribution. He said that's always been a part of his game, but he hadn't really been able to show it. How do you encourage that expression and that, that assisting and ball handling and, and kind of the flashiness that he shows without it getting, I guess, too far? He, he knows for the most part if he's defending, I'm going to let that – rope go a little bit longer you know he's going to have more freedom to be himself and play his game and uh, the times that you know he and I probably don't see eye to eye is if he gets beat back door because he's standing and ball watching or if he's not sprinting back in defensive transition or he's not talking you know and then you know the reality of it is if he has three four turnovers in 20 minutes that's not good and so you can Express yourself, be yourself, but hey, you got to take care of the ball. If you get one or two turnovers, okay, I'll live with that as long as you're defending. And uh, I think we have a pretty good understanding of that. Mike, we uh, we asked you early in camp about the rebounding issues and whether you were going to have to change some things around. Is a game like tonight where Domas isn't there and everybody has to go rebound sort of a good thing for your team where they can't just rely on him to, to clean up everything? Yeah, for sure. And not only that, it's it's great because it, those guys crash the offensive glass pretty hard. And uh, they have strong, quick athletes that, that will go to the glass. But uh, not only that, they you know they like to dribble drive, and they have a lot of guys that can do that. And so when they get downhill, this happened to us, especially in the first half. In the first half, we gave up 13 second-chance points uh, on, I don't know, 9, 10 offensive rebounds. And a lot, you know, a few times... They got downhill against the dribble drive. JaVale or Alex went over to try to trap the box or contest a shot, and then we did not sink back to Kessler, the, 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 their, their big center. And he was a load for us down there. And we have to do a better job of knowing that if we go help, if our big goes to help on a dribble drive, then somebody's got to get back and hit him or at least uh, sandwich him 
to try to keep him off the off the offensive glass. Yeah, Coach, uh, 32 and a half minutes for Davion tonight and only one foul, yeah. and you actually challenged the one, um, but you've been preaching being physical without fouling. How good is it to have such a good example out there? He, he was really good uh, tonight. I, I thought uh, he stepped up and he took the challenge of guarding um, it was Horton, Horton Tucker. Uh, you know, he was a load for us the whole, entire game, and, and I thought Davion's ability to move his feet and his strength, it, it's it's probably second to none, you know, in this league when you have when you're talking about the combination of quickness, strength, uh, and know how while 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 having the determination to do it. Um, you know, that's a superpower, and I know it's hard, but he can make a lot of money in this league if he could ever get to a point to where he's taking that on every single time he's on the floor. Coach, uh, JaVale McGee gave you 12, got 12 buckets, uh, five offensive rebounds, uh, three turnovers in those 20 minutes, but uh, that's about the only blemish there. How would you assess his uh, preseason? I thought his uh, preseason was pretty good. You know, um, I, the one thing that you just mentioned are turnovers. He had three, I think, in our last game against Golden State. And – in like 12 to 13 minutes, you know, he has three tonight and 20 minutes. And at that spot, we can't have him, especially if he's going, and he'll average around 12 minutes or so, but we can't have him, you know, making three, four turnovers while he's out there during that time. Um, his his ability to be a vertical threat at the rim is going to open up a lot for Malik and everybody else. And I think he understands that part. Uh and then his presence around the rim is going to deter our opponents from time to time. I think he has a good job understanding that. So I, I thought overall his preseason was pretty good, minus the turnovers. Mike, I'll bail you out. Uh, fortunately for your fans, the, the Fan Fest is before the Republic game. They could probably do both if they wanted to, to, go, to go to both. Go uh, to both. The Fan Fest, thank you. Tina and V, uh, we're trying to get people back in the building. So go to Fan Fest first, just make it an all-day thing, and then go to Republic game. All right. And um, looking at Kevin, he, I, you know, we, we don't have as, as well a trained an eye as you do. I, I saw an early, like, reaching foul. There was a blow-by. I think he's like, I don't know, the, the shooting numbers. I think he's 5 of 26 in the preseason. Where, where's your level of concern on, on offense, on defense, and, and what do you do in the next week uh, before the, the regular season begins? But, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. He's going to get an opportunity, though. I mean, he shot the ball well for us last year. Um, obviously, not just him, but everybody needed to defend better than what we did last year from the outset. And so I'm putting pressure on him as well as everybody else to go out there and get it done on that end of the floor. And for me, that's my biggest uh, level of concern or area of concern, and not just with him. Like I said, it's, it's, it's everybody else. And I said it about Malik getting beat back door and some other guys getting beat back door. We, we have to do a better job in the pick and roll as, as a group. Um, but it's something that I'm going to be evaluating, you know, the entire year, but not waiting until the end of the year. It's going to happen for us yesterday. And and if he can figure out it, it defensively, just like everybody else, uh, then you're going to get an opportunity, you know. And if, if he misses some shots, I believe in his, his shooting ability. He's shown he's been able to do that his entire career. I don't ever want him hesitating or not taking a shot. Um, you know, I think that will come in time as long as you keep playing the right way. Uh, but we have to understand that we need to be a physical defensive team first so that it's not anything that we have to change come playoff time. If I could ask yeah. you, do you think the, the effort, the extra effort maybe, or, or a thought or attention on the defensive side might be affecting the game on the offensive side of the Well, I, I think not just with him. I think uh, – when when you are playing that much harder defensively, and you know your your physicality is increased, like like you, and your intensity, like like I just said, it, it's a different shot on the other end of the floor. It just it just is, and uh, it, you know until you get used to it, you know playing that hard 
all the time, playing that physical all the time. Um, I, you know, it, 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 until you get used to it, uh, you know, you may struggle to make shots that you normally make. You know, it's a, a game of basketball is, is usually a, uh, about being in rhythm. And, again, when you're playing – physical and with intensity like I'm I'm trying to push them to do early on sometimes it, it gets you a little disjointed you know especially on offense end of the floor and your legs might be a little bit more fatigued when you're when you got that open look or and or even your 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 mind might be a little bit more fatigued when you have that open look or your arms and so uh it's something that again we want to get used to right now and and uh, <clears throat> you know I I we're taking the right shots for the most part. We're taking the right shots. And as long as we keep taking the right shots, if they don't go in, I'm willing to live with that to a certain degree right now. Um, as long as our intensity and our physicality is up on the other end of the floor. Yeah, just all the talk about the weekend plans. If you are able to attend an event after Fan Fest, I'm wondering, is it a tough decision between – Sac Republic, and then also Sacramento State has a big game as well. I'm not sure if you. Yeah, they they, they oh, let's see who they put football game. Who they play? Montana. State. Montana State, oh yeah, yeah, it's a big game. I mean, yeah, I, the the playoffs are in, in no disrespect, Coach Thompson. You know, I love you guys, um, and I'm hoping you guys win. And I had a great I had a great time when I went out there last time. Man. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's tough. That, that tough. We can move on if you want. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> tough. Play- I got I got to figure it out. But the playoff game is huge. Playoff makes it makes sense. Sacramento, yeah. you hope they have bigger games down down the line. Yeah. Uh, How's the young kid playing? The young kid for him. He got like a thirteen or fourteen year old kid. Mark. For Sac Republic. Yeah. I, I don't think he's played very much. Has yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah. Got in one game. I think it's his. You made history, though. Yeah. That's good. It's a good thing. And then, uh, ba- I think he's 14. Basketball related questions. He's last, uh, ja- ja- JaVale and Malik, they're developing quite a two man game. I'm just wondering, is that something that you and the coaching staff are seeing and encouraging, or is that just happening within the flow of the game between those two guys? No, it, it's, you know, the more they play together, I think the better it will be. Um, you know, when I, when I, when JaVale was a free agent, that was one of the things I talked to him about. I said, I said, hey, Malik's one of the better pick and roll players in the game. And, you know, the Malik, really, he does. He wants to, everybody knows this and it gets him in trouble sometimes, but he wants to throw the lob first. Uh, then I think he wants to score second. And then I think he wants to spray the ball third. And, you know, when you have a guy like JaVale dive into the rim, it makes it a little easier to throw that lob. Now JaVale gets one or two, and now Malik's game opens up at the rim. So we felt they would have a chance to be a dynamic pick-and-roll duo. And uh, it's starting to to show a little bit, and I think the more reps they get together, uh, the better it will become.